Good evening. The opening song is Lift High the Cross. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This Holy Thursday, we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to, or our, for our intercession. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, 
who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son when about to hand himself over to death entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. In the presence of 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved, in his, he loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. We have come up with a word in staff, or on the staff at the, of the parish, we, um, we've come up with the term covidical. We like it, we use it. And uh, of course, at this time, on a normal Holy Thursday Mass, 
I would wash the feet of some of the members of this congregation. But as we discussed it, we discussed and thought that it's too covidical. So we won't do it this time. We didn't do it last year. It's not taking me long to forget. There's a lot of things I can't seem to remember, and it may have something to do with age, and it may not. I graduated from St. Meinrad Seminary just about four years ago now. There are a lot of names of seminarians that I'm starting to forget. I sometimes can't remember what professor I had for which class. I spent six years at St. Meinrad. I thought it would take far more than four years for me to start forgetting. It isn't taking me long to forget. I can't remember some things. Or did I say that already? (laughs) We've been in this COVID mode for a little over a year now. I've forgotten a lot of things about everyday life that were so common for us just a little over a year ago. I almost can't remember what it's like to sit down at a restaurant. I haven't seen a movie in over a year. It sort of seems like I've always checked the COVID-19 statistics every day. I had had completely forgot how to do Holy Thursday Mass completely and had to look at it like I'd never seen it before. It's weird. Are you experiencing it too? In the first reading for tonight, we heard about the instructions to the ancient Israelites for remembering the Passover. It seems as though God understood that when we establish new routines, the old ones are easily forgotten. So, the Passover celebration was established. Then Jesus came to earth in his incarnation, his death and resurrection we remember and celebrate this week. His Lord's Supper tonight. But as if, it's as if Jesus knew of our limited abilities to remember. And so he instituted the Eucharist as the new celebration of the Passover. Like a new TV show. Passover, the Jesus edition. In the second reading, the Apostle Paul speaks of this Eucharistic tradition. He's handing it on to the faithful of the church at Corinth. I don't remember what having a full church for Mass feels like. I was afraid it would happen, and it has. We've gotten close. The Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith, but was it really such for us before the the pandemic? Or did we first, first and foremost go to church because this Mass time worked better for us or that one or because one of them entertained us more or had the kind of music we like more? How often did I get to the third mass of a weekend and just simply wish it was over so I could go and take a nap? I firmly admit that it happened too many times. Our formidable human brains are apparently too susceptible to new routines or are too susceptible to forgetting old ones, at least taking them for granted, for sure. I dare say that we won't do that anytime soon, but I'm willing to bet it'll happen sooner than we think. This Mass is the most significant celebration of Holy Communion of this or any year. Last year, Holy Thursday was memorable because of our state's stay-at-home order. Was it memorable for you the year before? Five years ago? Ten? Or fifty? Or is this your first? 
this Mass, this celebration, this Holy Thursday, will it be memorable simply because you're here tonight? Or will it be memorable because you will receive the body of Christ? Will we remember long after tonight? Or will we forget? Let us bring our prayers before our most gracious God. For the church, may we, through the graces of this sacred tritium, grow in our ability to Christ, to the world, with confidence and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For governments and world leaders, may the gospel message of peace and blessing inform and direct their decisions and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the sick and the dying, may Christ the healer give them hope and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord bless us, keep us faithful, and make us ever more holy in this upcoming Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and look upon the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For Alan Herman, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those intentions that you hold in your hearts today. Almighty and living God, we praise and glorify you for your steadfast and eternal mercy as we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. What do you want of me?
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacri sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope and Joseph, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate 
order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar re receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them up, and bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the kingdom, power, and the glory of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
in just a moment. We'll pray the prayer after communion. But after the prayer, uh, prayer after communion is prayed, we will begin a procession with the Blessed Sacrament that is remaining on the altar. We will process around the church um, and come up the center aisle. Uh, we would ask that you would kneel, if able, during that procession. And then, if you'll hold on just a moment, we're going to go back over to the chapel back here and get the monstrance with the Blessed Sacrament in it. And we're going to place it in this niche over here, off to my right, off to your left. And we will have about 30 minutes of adoration if you'd like to stay. And if you, wouldn't, if you don't want to stay, that's fine. You can leave. We just ask that everybody would leave in silence this evening. Sound good? Okay. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sing, my tongue, the Savior's glory. Of his flesh the mystery sing. Of the blood of Christ exceeding, shed by our immortal King, destined for the world's redemption. From a noble womb to spring of a pure and spotless virgin. 
redemption from a noble womb to spring of a pure and spotless virgin born for us on earth below he as man with us conversing bade the seeds of truth to sow then he closed in solemn order wondrously his life of woe on the night of that last supper seated with his chosen band he the paschal victim eating first fulfills the law's command then as food to the disciples gives himself with his own hands word made flesh the bread of nature by his word to flesh he turned wine into his blood he changes what though sense no change discerns only be the heart in earnest faith is less than quickly learned Thank <laughs> you. 